Hello everyone, welcome to the distributed programming class and today we are going to learn about the multi-client connection in TCP. Actually, when we are working on the multi-connection, we have to implement the multi-client connections. So what does it mean? So uh, our server must be can handle what, what more than one client, right? So actually what we are we have implemented before, our server can only handle one client. But today we are going to make our server can handle more than one client. So how to do that? So first of all, this is the outline of our course today. Multi-client connection in TCP concept, multi-threading in Java, and common technical procedure to develop multi-client connection in TCP. And the case study, we will continue our previous project, the simple that simple chat TCP with multi-client in week six A. And we also uh, discuss about the technical procedure and implementation code. So. Multi-client connection in TCP concept. Today we combine two concepts between TCP and multi-threading concept. So what does the multi-threading means? So this is the basic of the multi-client connection. When we are we, when we want to create a multi-connection, we have to implement the multi-threading. So today, before we create our server, before we make our server can handle more than one client. We will discuss about the multi-threading concept first. Okay, TCP communication is implemented for transferring data from another device of a network, and multi-threading concept is implemented for handling many requests in the same time. So yeah, the basic method for create our server, for make our server can handle more than one client. We have to implement the multi-threading concept first. So before we create we make our server can handle one more than one client. We will discuss about the multi-threading concept first. And this is the architecture of our uh, project. We have a server, we have a client, and we have also the database. When the client wants to connect to the server and access the database, the client must be connected to the server first. So every time when the client wants to access the database, the client will connect to the server first. And now we will make our server can handle more than one client, right? Multi threading in Java, one set of instructions to be executed independently named thread. Multi threading is multi thread. So what does thread mean? One set of instructions to be executed independently. A multi threaded program contains two or more parts that can run concurrently, and each part can handle a different task at the same time making optimal use of the available resources, especially when your computer has multiple CPUs. And Java is a multi-threaded programming language, which means we can develop multi-threaded program using Java. So when we are talking about the multi-threading, we will make our program can or uh, can run more than one process. So you have a true process and you can run that process at the same time. So we can implement that method for handling more than one client. So we will implement on the server side. We will implement the multi-threading concept on our server side. Then our server can handle more than one client. So our server can handle more than one client means our server can work uh, more than one process. Okay. So this is the life cycle of thread. The thread has three status. So it's just a theory for the multi-threading concept. We have waiting status, time waiting, and terminated. So when you thread in the waiting status, sometimes thread change her status to waiting thread if they will be waiting for another thread to complete the task. Thread back to the status runnable only if another thread to signal to return that to this. So this is the waiting status for the thread. So when you when you thread in the waiting status, it will wait, it will be waiting for another process to to be done first. So after another process to be done, so the the thread with the waiting status will run after that. And also the thread has a time waiting. What does it mean? Time waiting. 
Threat runnable can change their status to time waiting for a certain time span. Status back to the runnable when the time is up. So when you are when you you your thread in the time waiting status, your thread will be wait the time. Uh, yeah, will be wait in a time after the time is passed. Your thread will be runnable and terminated thread runnable. I'm sorry. Thread runnable with the status terminated task has been completed. So when your thread has a terminated status, so your thread is done. So your thread is not run, not run, 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 run again. Okay. Thread priorities. Every Java thread has a priority that helps the operating system determine the order in which threads are scheduled. Java thread priorities are in the range between main priority a constant of 1 and max priority a constant a constant of 10 by default every thread is given priority norm priority a constant of 5 so the thread priority is actually when you are creating a thread it has a priorities so the higher priorities the thread will be run firstly and thread with Higher priority are more important to a program and should be allocated for a of time before lower priority threads. Weapon thread priorities can guarantee the order in which thread execute and are very much platform dependent. So we will discuss it later about the thread priorities. Actually, you, you don't need to be confused about the thread priorities. When you are creating a process, when you are creating a thread, you can give the priorities of each thread. So the high priorities of the thread the thread will be run firstly okay so in the implementation threading in java there are two procedures to implement thread you can choose one of them first with implements a runnable interface and second with extended thread class so you will see the implementation of multi threading in the java programming language after this so there are two there are two uh, methods for implement the thread with using implements runnable interface and also with the extending thread class so you can try this example below please new create new project and name the project as a worker project like this one so you need to create a worker project and inside your worker project you need to create a worker class with the implements runnable like this one so this class has for data member, name, distance, thread, and priorities. And you need to create the constructor for the worker class with the parameter name and priorities. And you need to implement this code for setting the data member for name, priorities, and distance, and worker. So you need to create this class first. So I will give you an example for creating that class. So you need to create a new project. And I will give the name of the project as worker project. Okay, I will rename this class as worker I'm sorry no no not this one I will create another class with the name of worker okay then I will create for the data member name I'm sorry I forgot to make this to implement runnable so we will make this class as a thread okay so you can just yeah generate this run method automatically by clicking the warning message here
so I will uh, create another data member this thing so you don't need to be confused I will explain you later what we will to create so the class worker so what the function of class worker so you don't need to be confused right now I will I will explain you later so you just need to make this worker class force then I will explain to you Okay. So I'm going to make the constructor here. So we will set the distance to zero so you don't need to be confused for the function of the distance I will explain you later So like this one, and then we will implement the run method. So I'm gonna uh, remove the generated code from the run method. Then I will create some code here. So actually, the worker class, the worker class, is a worker. So the object of worker class is a worker. So when we are creating the worker object, then the worker can run. You know, run. You know, run with the distance, right? So the distance could be one meters, two meters, three meters, and I will give the distance randomly so like you see here I will create the random for randoming the distance of the method of the worker right like this one Okay.
okay so every time when you are creating the thread class you need to implement runnable this is the first method to create the thread object using implement runnable as you can see before there are two methods for creating the thread object using implements runnable and extends thread so we will uh, implement the first method using the implement runnable so like this one so I have created the thread object but it does not finish so I'm gonna create another method here public stop So I'm gonna give this priority to yeah from the data member and also it don't start. So remember when you are creating the thread object with the implements runnable, you must have the run method and also the start method to make your worker class as a thread class or thread object, right? Us. then in in here we will create we will call the worker object so I will make a two variable a worker a equal new worker with parameter sim with this class so I will give the name of this object as any and then I will give this object priority to 5 and then I will create another variable worker B worker B with the name uh, booty with same pri priority with the worker A then I will start these two object a dot run or a dot start then b dot start so it means these two object will run at the same time because of worker class is a thread object so when you are uh, when you run this object at the same time so these two objects will run concurrently okay so we will see what will happen if i uh, run this worker project of java yeah so booty and ani will run at the same times and as you see Ani is running faster than Budi, so it depends on the random variable. It depends on the random value in your worker project because every second, not every second, every a uh, half second, Budi and Ani will random this uh, the distance. So yeah, it depends on the random value from the worker class. So if I uh, change this value to 1000 
So it means every one second, Hudi or Ani will uh, get a random value for their distance. Rather, slip means this is the interval time every looping inside the while loops here. So sorry, it's it could be in this uh, while loop like this one. Yeah, then it means every a second, Hudi or Ani will get the distance value from this random method. Yeah. I will run this project again. Yeah, every second, Hudi and Ani will get a new distance from the random variable. So it means uh, Hudi and Ani will uh, run with different velocity, right? So the distance is randomized from a previous method. So after Hudi get the 100 distance, so Hudi will stop running. Then, as you can see right here, Hudi is run faster than the Ani. So yeah, you can run these two objects, Ani and Hudi, at the same time. So if you have an uh, if you have a, a thread object, you can run there's two objects at the same time, not not just two objects. It could be three, four, and more than one objects. So yeah, it it is the fun the functionality of the thread object. So you can run this two object at the same time.